the protection of human skin has been about protection against ultraviolet rays, first UVB, then later we uh, recognized that UVA is uh, dangerous for human skin. Uh, but most recently we have learned that also wavelengths uh, beyond the UV spectrum can exert detrimental effects on human health. Uh, and I'm particularly referring to um, visible light. Uh, in this regard, the blue light is the most important one, but also rays in the infrared range, uh, which is called the IRA range, that is the near-infrared range, uh, is a problem. Um, infrared A radiation um, was found to contribute significantly to aging of skin, in particular to the formation of wrinkles. And there's very strong evidence from animal experiments. When you take a mouse and you expose it uh, to uh, infrared A radiation, you will see that very similar to UVB radiation, this uh, causes wrinkle formation. And when you use both UVB and IRA, then the mice even get more wrinkles, already indicating that the underlying mechanisms are different. There have been several studies um, that wanted to address if infrared A radiation in one way or the other is also relevant for photocarcinogenesis. Um, but from the studies that have been published thus far, the, the picture is not clear. Um, there seems to be um, <clears throat> some alteration of UVB radiation induced skin cancer development by IRA rays. The type of tumors that you get is different. You get more sarcomas, uh, but it is not clear how relevant these results are for human photocarcinogenesis. And clearly IRA radiation alone does not cause uh, skin cancer. The, the visible light spectrum studies have clearly shown that light in the blue light range um, can affect pigmentation in human skin. Um, and this is not only a problem uh, with regards to cosmetics, you know that uh, depending on the ethnicity, uh, humans like to be as pale as possible and therefore they are not happy if, if their skin starts to tan. But it seems to be also relevant for uh, pigmentary disorders such as melasma and most, most likely also for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. The critical question now is what well, we know about the new problems, but what can we do? Uh, are available sunscreens sufficient or do we have to add something? Um, and for IRA radiation, the, situa the situation is very clear with the, the normal UV filters that are available. It is not possible to provide protection against IRA radiation. But uh, we and others have analyzed the analyzing mechanisms and it appears that um, oxidative stress, which is being generated by mitochondrial dysfunction, seems to be quite relevant. And this can easily be then translated also into um, sunscreen development because there are antioxidants uh, that can be added to sunscreens uh, which have been proven in controlled, that is vehicle controlled, human clinical studies that uh, by tropically applying these molecules to the skin then human skin is, is better protected against IRA radiation induced uh, detrimental effects such as the uh, increased expression of collagen degrading enzymes such as MMP1. For blue light the story is a little bit more complex um, the mechanism also has been delineated um, and at least the, uh, the, the, the very long persisting part of the visible light induced skin pigmentation is apparently very difficult to tackle. Um, it cannot be tackled by antioxidants and this is really something dermatologists need to understand. Uh, currently the only strategy that works are opaque cosmetic products. Uh, for example, iron oxide containing products which can uh, absorb um, or reflect uh, in the blue light range. But uh, the compliance of such products is very low because they are visible and, and therefore um, there is a strong interest in identifying alternative strategies. Um, I really like to emphasize this because there are products on the market which contain antioxidants and which uh, claim protection against visible light. Uh, I, I, I buy or I believe that these products can prevent visible light induced oxidative stress, but unfortunately visible light induced oxidative stress is not relevant for visible light induced skin pigmentation. So it's really unclear what is the health effect that these uh, products can actually prevent or reduce. One big question mark now coming up at the horizon more and more, and that is uh, 
You see, historically, we have looked at all these wavelengths regions always in a very isolated way. So first, we only used UVB sources, then we used UVA sources, then even UVA1 sources. Now we use blue light sources, or we, we use uh, UV-free near-infrared A radiation sources. This was all very important research to establish that these wavelength areas can have detrimental effects. But when we are out in the sun and we are exposed to natural sunlight, then our skin uh, is being exposed to all of these different wavelength areas at the same time. And there is increasing evidence now that these wavelength regions can interact with each other and that the net result might be different from what we get if we are just being exposed to a single type of these wavelengths. And this is really a very important new area of research that we are currently uh, diving into.